Welcome. In this class, we will discuss the National Agroforestry Policy 2014. We have already covered what is agroforestry and what is social forestry in a separate session. This class would focus mainly on the recent policy that has been released. Uh, before starting that, we will focus on what is agroforestry. Just a quick recap of what we have done. So, if we talk about agroforestry, I can say planting of trees or shrubs in and around the farmland or the agricultural belt and then you have maintaining the rural landscape along with the uh, agricultural crops. Now, when we talk about agroforestry, we can say there are two components that we basically discuss under agroforestry, the traditional component and the modern component. When we talk about traditional component, we say it mainly focuses on three things that is tree, crops and livestock and these three things try to work around six M's that is the food, fodder, fuel, for uh, fruits, fertilizers and fiber. So this is what was considered as the traditional component or the traditional practices under agroforestry since long. Before agroforestry started, we mainly survived on what was known as shifting cultivation. So it's working on one field of land cutting that, burning that and moving on to that next field of land and leaving that land barren for few days so that the soil productivity is enhanced. However, shifting cultivation is now confined to the areas of Northeast India. Most of the regions have shifted towards agroforestry. Now there are still regions with traditional agroforestry which are Oreons in Rajasthan, then you have the cardamom hills in Kerala. You have the edler based cardamom system that is prevalent in Sikkim. And then finally you have the Kangayam system that is present in Tamil Nadu. So these are some of the traditional components or traditional methods of agroforestry that are prevalent. These focuses on the traditional component. Then you have besides traditional component, the commercial agroforestry. When we talk about commercial agroforestry, I can classify those under three heads. The first is pulp based, timber based and willow based. So willow based mainly found in the hilly areas of Jammu Kashmir, Himachal Pradesh, Uttarakhand. Then you have pulp based mainly confined to the paper based regions of Punjab, Gujarat, Haryana, Rajasthan and Tamil Nadu. Then you have timber based where mainly um, crop uh, trees are grown for timber purposes in Kerala, Maharashtra and uh, most of the south regions. So this is another commercial agroforestry what we consider. So all these are prevalent under the traditional component. However, nowadays the focus has shifted. The focus is not only getting the six Fs, rather the focus has shifted to microclimatic moderations. That means planting of trees would lead to moderation of climate in this specific region. Then there would be impact on the biodiversity of that region would flourish. Carbon sequestration would take place, that is more of carbon capturing would take, uh, take place. It would help us to protect the water resources, protect soil erosion and uh, lead to control of pollution in a greater manner. So these are some of the modern components that ag agroforestry nowadays focuses on. Now uh, if we talk about case studies from world, uh, it's not just India that focuses on agroforestry. You have different parts of the world like uh, a huge number of efforts have been taken place in African nations. Mainly if we talk about Kenya, uh, there you have a rule that 10% of the farms must be covered under trees. So that's a kind of rule to promote agroforestry even not only in India but also in the countries abroad. If we talk specifically about India, there have been kind of uh, case studies that we can take or you have you can say there have been projects that have been going on so in MP you have a, a project that is Lok Vaniki 
and this project initially started with three districts went on to 10 districts and now covers nearly 45 districts of madhya pradesh and india and it focuses on scientific management of forest uh, cropping patterns on the privately managed land so that is one uh, like land breaking example in agroforestry the next is the wadi system the wadi system started in south gujarat area uh, uh, south gujarat area the main focus under wadi system is development of agri horti silvicultural practices so it's another uh, kind of case study that we can incorporate for agroforestry purposes so these all uh, this started with south gujarat however gradually it is spread to the regions around so it is spread to states of maharashtra rajasthan uh, karnataka and so on and this wadi system has been prevalent as a successful technique for agro horticulture and silvicultural management the main idea in wadi uh, system is you have horticultural crops like 10 by 10 or 7 by 7 crop regions which have interlanes of trees and finally you have uh, borders of babul or uh, su babul what we call so those are some of the systems that have been adopted under agroforestry practices now if we talk about the national agroforestry 2014 the basic idea is to launch a policy or to create a framework where you would have trees along with shrubs on farmland and maintaining the rural rural landscape and that all together would lead to increase in productivity increase in profitability for the farmers increasing the diversity of the region creating more sustainable environment and betterment of the livelihood of the uh, dwellers in the rural areas now india has been the first nation in the world to declare an agroforestry policy so some of the major highlights if we talk about uh, india is the first nation to launch this agroforestry policy worldwide now the basic idea was laid forward with the theme trees for life and under this theme the main idea was as and as uh, the population of the region or the country is increasing the land holdings are getting smaller in size as they are being divided among the siblings and the family members so the best way to increase productivity is to grow trees around along with the existing crops so in each land holding if you have trees along with the existing cropping pattern that would lead to increase in productivity so that was the main idea that laid forward the reason why national uh, agroforestry policy should be laid down the main idea was to establish a national agroforestry board the cost of this project was uh, estimated at around dollar uh, usd dollars 33 million and then the another main objective was to increase the area which is presently under cropping from 25 million hectares to nearly 53 million hectares so that was the main idea that worked around the policy making now if we talk about india you have 80% of the farmers who have land holding size of less than 2 hectares so these are some of the important facts that we must know before we proceed about the needs for the need for the policy so most of the land holdings are less than 2 hectares so you have very small size farm holdings that exist 64% of the timber comes as fuel woods or uh, uh, comes from mainly trees which are grown on the farm so if you have this number of trees that are increasing that would definitely lead to more employment generation and it could create nearly 450 employment days per hectare per year so that is what is estimated under this policy now what was what led to the origin uh, for the national agroforestry policy was it started with the national forest policy in 1990 uh, 1988 where ideas about agroforestry were discussed then you had the agricultural policy 
Greening India 2001, Bamboo Mission 2002, which talked about bamboo fencing across uh, most of the farms or uh, planting bamboos across the farm areas. Then the Policy on Farmers 2007 and finally the Green India Mission 2010. All these policies talked about the need for agroforestry. As a result, the agroforestry policy in 2014 was laid down. Based on the survey conducted by the CMRI uh, Karnal and then you had the Forest Survey of India. So on the map you have the data from both the Forest Survey, those marked in the pink is the data from the Forest Survey of India and the rest is the data from CMRI. So both of these show that the regions which well flourished uh, in agroforestry are mainly the states of Maharashtra, Madhya Pradesh uh, and Rajasthan. If we look on towards the northeast, you had very poor agroforestry management as we talked about most of the practices there are still focusing on shifting cultivation. So there is a need to bring around agroforestry uh, or agroforestry practices that should be introduced in the northeast India. The similar pattern you can see in north India, you have very low proportion of agroforestry developments. Now, this was the reason that there was a need for agroforestry policy because there is a lack of institutional mechanism that could lay forward the whole idea for uh, the country as a whole. There is no integrated farming approach that should be adopted across the country. Then you have certain regulatory regimes which are very restrictive in nature specifically mainly when we talk about harvesting and transportation. So when it comes to harvesting and transportation, there are certain uh, regulations which are more stringent which need to be focused on. There is very lack of, uh, there is a huge lack or huge gap in research uh, in mainly in the northeast and northern India. The quality lacks, then you have the institutional finances that should be introduced and uh, even if the farmer is planting a number of crops, they do not have proper market access. So these are some of the reasons why uh, there was a need that we should establish an agroforestry policy per se. Now if we work around this agroforestry policy on the ideas that we have propounded, there are certain benefits that could be laid down. It would definitely enhance the productivity as we said, microclimatic moderation would increase. There would be resilience of landscape, carbon sequestration potential would increase, uh, it would create more employment, generate more income, it would lead to creation of fuel, uh, fuel fodder, timber for the villagers, it would expand uh, the plantation area, it would lead to more greenery we can say, uh, definitely it would increase the forest cover in the nearby areas. So these are some of the benefits that we can really uh, understand by visualizing the impact of growing trees around, in and around the farmland. So you had some of the projects that were released. One of the interesting projects was conducted by ICAR, the Indian Council for Agricultural Research. And that project focused on two or three uh, uh, studies that was the All India Coordinated Research Project on Agroforestry in 83 and National Research Center for Agroforestry in 88. And both of them tried to explain that there is a need to revive the traditional as well as the modern approaches. Only when both of these approaches are revived, you could look forward to increase productivity with the existing landforms. So there was, uh, there is a kind of research and development input with establishment of nearly 30 laboratories that has been proposed under the National Agroforestry Policy. Then you have uh, numerous uh, plants like MGN, uh, MGN Riga, that is the Rural Employment Guarantee Scheme. Then you have the Welfare Schemes, the Ministry of uh, Environment and Forest, Ministry of Rural Development, Labor Welfare. So all these ministries are putting in uh, for research cooperation and agricultural productivity to enhance agricultural productivity in the areas of uh, uh, agroforestry and promote growth of the villages nearby. The main idea is to identify 20 best species or common species I could say, uh, 20 common species to be planted which could be planted very quickly and in, uh, could survive in nearly all ty types of climatic conditions. So these would lead to more of fuel and uh, uh, timber wood. 
and this would definitely enhance or it would be a kind of fast growing crop as compared to other so for this you have data collection that has been going on by various nsos and cssos so these would help to identify the species which could really survive well in nearly all the climatic regions and would uh, give good benefit to the uh, the nearby regions then what are the gaps in agroforestry policy when we talk about gaps in agroforestry policy there are few things that we need to understand first that when we talked about the need for agroforestry policy we talked about institutional financing so institutional financing is a difficult proposition for most of the farmers so it should be brought out in such a simple manner that it could reach to the common farmer so one of the major gaps in agroforestry policy is reaching out to the farmers or the common man so there is no proper guidelines what should be followed how it should be followed there is no proper uh, uh, guideline that explains the institutional financing the payment uh, services that should be laid forward then uh, we talked about uh, the regulatory regimes the stringent regulatory regimes there is a need to liberalize those but still there has not been uh, any significant efforts done in the uh, field to uh, revive those so those are some of the suggestions that we ne really need to understand and finally specifically for the north east shifting from uh, shifting agriculture uh, shifting cultivation to uh, agroforestry based system is a, a high bar so that should be considered again there is one major thing that we need to understand when it comes to the farmers they are not ready to adopt the agroforestry changes or the policies that are laid down it's mainly because of some of the reasons that the farmer feels is first the long rotation because a tree would take a long time so it would be a kind of rotation period would be much longer than the present rotation period then if you are planting trees on the existing land uh, area the farmers feel that their land holdings are already reduced in size and on that land holding over that if you are planting trees that would definitely decrease the gross area for cultivation so that is another reason why farmers are resistant to adopt the practices for agroforestry then you have the legal processes which they try to avoid or they feel are much more complicated and they don't want to enter into any of the legal formalities and finally you have lastly the fluctuations in the market so market fluctuations of the rate uh, the rate fluctuations would definitely affect or is a major um, barrier for the farmers to adopt the agroforestry policies so this the, this was a kind of uh, small briefing on what is the national Ag uh, agroforestry policy 2014 the major benefits and the drawbacks and what are the gaps and why farmers are resistant to adopt to the agroforestry policy changes in the next session we would be covering more topics which are related to uh, recent happenings the topics related mainly to the environment you can subscribe to our channel for more updates have a good day